Hello, in this video, I'm gonna do some specialized options for selecting multiple objects. And I'm doing a specific video on this because there are several different options that are easy to overlook, but they can really help you save some time when you're working with complex drawings. If you've been using AutoCAD for some time already, you probably have a pretty good feel for the more obvious options in how to select objects by either clicking on them, which um, you know is the most natural way, and then you can do a window or a crossing window. Just to review those real quick, a window moves toward the right and generally it has kind of a blue background and that will select whatever objects are completely enclosed in the window. On the other hand, a crossing window moves toward the right, has the green background and will select whatever is completely in the window or is even touching the green area. So obviously you could see how I selected a lot more objects doing a green window because it selected these diagonal lines and the dot hatch for insulation and whatnot, as opposed to when I did the blue window where I only get the roof tiles. This is a wall section and it's a, uh, or a building section. And it's a common type of drawing where you have to select many objects because you may want to change the properties. For example, let's say you printed this drawing and then you realize that the roof tiles are printing too light or too dark or something like that. So all these um, tiles need to be put on a different layer or maybe they need to be moved or some other uh, property needs to be changed with them. So I could select them all manually like this and that would take some time, but it would work. And then I could pick a different layer, for example. So I wanted to go over some other options that you would have in terms of selecting objects and uh, you can apply these options obviously uh, in any um, command like a move command copy command rotate etc or if you just want to change properties in the properties palette or the layer manager so if i want to select the roof tiles only it would make a lot more sense for me to do a blue window because now i'm not getting the other objects that i don't want to select and then i could do a few more windows like this to grab additional objects now, there are some other options, and that's what I wanted to really go over with this video, is what other choices do you have? So these choices are available, again, during the modify commands, or if you're just trying to select objects to change the layer or other properties. So to give you an idea of how to get some um, tips in selecting these objects, let's say I want to erase these objects for a minute. So I'm going to start my erase command. All that it says at the command line is select objects. It doesn't give you any hints as far as what your choices are. But if I type a question mark and enter, then it actually shows you, it gives you a little help in terms of what does AutoCAD accept in terms of options right now. And you can see there's a whole lot of options down there uh, that would work um, during this command. And these are standard options during any selection process. So in addition to the window and the crossing window, uh, you can also uh, type L to select the last created object. Like if I just uh, created um, a line and I want to erase it, I could just type L right now and it would be selecting the last object that was created. So I don't use that one very often, but it is an easy one to use. The one that I think is uh, very helpful to know is the fence. And you can see that's down there at my command line. So I'm gonna type F for fence. And now I can draw a line and make it as squiggly as I want, um, meaning kind of like a polyline and it's gonna select any objects that my fence touches. So you can see I can draw a diagonal kind of um, across all these blocks. And then when I'm done with my fence, I'll right click or hit space or enter. And you can see it immediately selected them. So you're kind of drawing a squiggly line, kind of like a polyline, but anything that that fence touches gets selected. So that's an, an easy option that I use sometimes and it can be a huge time saver compared to doing windows or crossing windows now i could do another fence if i wanted uh, so i can do f again and then extend my fence up the rest of the roof line and then i'm good to go so now i've erased all those so i'm going to hit undo so they come back one thing to keep in mind that autocad is a little bit odd about is um, if you're zoomed in very closely generally autocad doesn't like it if you pan in the process of doing a window so if I start a window right now, and now I pan down to the other end of the roof, you can see what happens is it dropped out the ones that I panned out of the screen so they were not selected. And it only selected the ones that were visible um, when I finished the window. 
So when you're doing a window or crossing window, don't pan in the process. So you may zoom out a little and then start your window. And then if you need to, you can always do a second window and a third window and a fourth window to add additional objects. So keep that in mind. Um, that kind of uh, messes up the selection process. So if I look back at my uh, help again during the erase command, there's a couple of other ones that I wanted to mention. Uh, one that I use very frequently is previous. So let's say that I've changed the properties of a group of objects. I'm going to do that real quick by doing a fence. So if I want to change the properties like the layer, I'm going to actually use the select command. And then now I can type F for fence and then do my fence along these roof tiles. And then when I'm done selecting them, I'll hit space, enter or right click. It maintains the selection of those objects and then I could change them to a different layer. Now, what if I wanted to do the same thing, but maybe I wanted to erase them now. So I'm going to do erase and then P for previous and it selects the previously selected group of objects. So after you have a group of objects selected and you do something with them, then if you use P for a shortcut uh, for previous, the next time you're in a mode where it's waiting for you to select things, then it will select that previously selected group of objects. So again, you'd have to have them selected first uh, at, during one process, and then the next time you need to select a group of objects, you can use previous. I use this a lot if I want to, let's say, copy and rotate something at the same time, or one after the other, or move and rotate. Like if I wanted to move this, I could move it, and then now I could rotate it and this do previous, and it selects the same object. In this particular case, it's not a huge time saver because it's just one little light fixture. But if it was a more complex object, it saves you a lot of time from having to select it another time. So another option, I went back into the erase command so I could show you a couple more options. So I'm doing my question mark again just to show you the command line. Um, you can toggle back and forth between add and remove mode. So normally it's waiting for you to add to the selection set. That's the default option. Uh, keep in mind you can hold shift and then select something to unselect it. But if I've selected a bunch and maybe I want to do a fence to remove objects, I can do R for remove and then I can do F for fence. So now it's doing um, the fence, but it's removing from the selection set. So you can switch back and forth between adding to the selection set and removing by using A for add and R for remove at any time. So I'm going to do A to go back to add mode and then question mark again in order to show you the options one more time. The uh, other couple options that I wanted to show you that I use fairly regularly are on um, the polygon and there's a window polygon or a crossing polygon. And this works the same way as a, a, a regular window, a blue one, or a crossing window, a green one, except by being a polygon, it means it's not just a simple rectangle shape. So in this case, I can do WP because remember that whatever's capitalized is your shortcut. So WP is capitalized in W polygon, so I'm going to type that. And now I can put this kind of funny shaped rectangular, uh, or not rectangular if I want, um, box around those particular objects. So I can make it whatever shape I need. And it's selected those objects. Uh, again, remember the blue color means it's going to only select the objects that are completely enclosed. And then the green one will be your crossing one, which means it'll select whatever is completely enclosed or even touched by the green area. So if I want to look at my help options again, notice the shortcut for crossing polygon is CP. So I can type that and now I can do a crossing polygon shape wherever I want. And you can see how it selected anything that even touched that area. So those are very useful. And this is an easy example when you have something that's angled. So it's not easy to do regular windows. Uh, you can use a fence or a, uh, a window polygon in order to grab them easily. There's one more option for selecting objects that's kind of different, but definitely worthwhile learning, and that's quick select. It's kind of like using a filter system to select objects based on their properties. So for example, this clay tile is a block because it has the uh, section cut portion and it has the portion and elevation. So if I look at the properties of that block in the properties palette, you can see that it obviously has a specific name, name assigned to the block, which is clay tile overlap. And uh, I can select all blocks instantly based upon um, that name. 
Uh, so for that matter, you can select any objects you want based upon specific properties. If you want to select all lines that are green or all yellow lines uh, or all lines that are on a specific layer or all rectangles that have a certain area, etc., then all of those are possible. Now you can type Q select at the command line and that would work. Or you can use the properties palette, which has a button at the upper right corner for quick select. So now I'm going to uh, first start at the top and work our way down. Do you want to apply your selection set to the entire drawing? Most of the time I do. Object type, this you can either select a specific type of object, such as a block, which is what I'm doing in this case, or you could say multiple, which means any. So maybe you want to select all objects that are on a certain layer and you don't care whether they're lines or arcs or circles or blocks or whatever, then you might leave that on multiple. In this case, I'm going to select all blocks that have that name. So the next box is um, the important one where you're starting to identify the properties that you want to use to select these objects. Because I'm going by a block reference name, I just have to scroll down and find the name uh, field and select that. So if you're selecting by layer, then you put it on layer. Or if you're selecting by a line weight, then you would select that. So whatever property you want to select by is what you're choosing. Then you're going down to the next option, which is equals. And so in other words, I'm going to say the block reference name equals and choose the block that I want. And it's that simple. If I want to select all blocks other than the clay tile overlap, then I would say not equal. So you can see how that uh, kind of makes sense. You can either select everything except what's on a certain property or everything that is a certain property, etc. So I'm going to say equals and then clay tile overlap and hit OK. And instantly I have 167 of those clay tiles selected. So quick select can be a huge time saver when you have specific things that you want to select based on those properties. Um, and the only other easy way to do this sometimes is with layer isolate. For example, if all those blocks were on a certain layer, I could isolate the layer and then put a big window around them. But what if there's a lot of other stuff on that layer, then it doesn't really become any easier. So that's another option if you're trying to select a lot of things and it's specific to a layer is to use layer isolate. But uh, quick select has a lot more power, obviously, in what properties you can select by. So now I could do whatever I wanted. I could erase them, move them, rotate them, or whatever, because it has all 167 of them selected. So I hope that helps you as you work on more complex drawings.